we'll just get started. Do you have any questions before we get into no. it? No. Okay, yeah, we'll just dive right in. So I could just, I, I could tell right away, Kate, you're a very sensitive soul. Have you always felt that you were since childhood? Yeah, like I had psychic dreams when I was a kid and my dad was like, oh yeah, your grandma had that. So I just didn't really think like anything of it, but I felt yeah. like I would like cry if like a tree fell over or like these oh. types of things, but I was very responsible. So I always saw my sister yeah. as the sensitive one because she had like imaginary friends and she would cry mm -hmm. over like animals more and yeah. I just kind of like my stuff was all very withheld but I had lots of like mm -hmm. dreams and impressions and I was really sensitive to like other people's things like other people's emotions and like really wise yeah. like wise old soul yeah yeah you're yeah. very and I'm very much an empath I could see yeah <laughs> it, yeah it totally totally makes sense the work that you are doing you I mean, I'm going to talk about this more towards the end, but you really are following your soul mission here with being a healer and helping other people, even just before we hit record with you saying that you'd love to help other <laughs> uh, people, you know, on these different, if we think of it like a tree, you know, all these different branches of spirituality and divination, whatever it might be, um, you're helping people to tap into their intuitive abilities in the way you have. And it's really beautiful to see. Um, that play out through your chart uh, and in your soul's history that I was looking into. Uh, you are, so you are water dominant, no surprise there <laughs> with that sensitive, you know, nature of your, of you, uh, you have your, so your signature sign is a cancer. Mm -hmm. So if we summed up one Zodiac sign out of your whole chart, it would be a cancer and cancer is super, super intuitive, all that. So also very nurturing uh, energy too, um, almost motherly. Are you a mother by any chance or do you kind of, are you the like friend that's kind of the mom sometimes taking care of people? <laughs> I'm the perpetual mother. My clients wish me happy yeah. Mother's Day and I cried this year because oh. I'm not a mother yet and I don't know how that will happen yet in life. I don't have a partner where that makes sense. Um, sure. But it's like everyone says <laughs> that I'm like yeah. the mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. And you know, yeah. sometimes family is thicker than blood, right? That expression. Yeah. So there you go. Absolutely. Wow, that's so yeah. sweet. So I do also get this very mermaidian energy with you uh that oracle high priestess kind of connection definitely coming through as a healer obviously you are achieving that in the work you do which is so amazing to see um so yeah let's uh i will go ahead and share i'm gonna walk you through basically uh, this pdf which you are gonna get emailed to you and you can have forever and ever it's yours to to have if there's anything that i mention or ask you that you don't feel comfortable sharing by all means just let me know it's totally that won't be a thing <laughs> <laughs> I did um I was curious if you wanted to share this uh you mentioned you have been in connection to um these pink beings and some uh, maybe particular being that you uh, refer to as the star folk is that correct Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. and again if you if you don't feel comfortable or they don't feel comfortable sharing this information no. I was only curious if perhaps they might have mentioned where they are from because I was getting a few indicators of where they could possibly be from mm. in your galactic astrology but mm. I did want to ask if have they ever shared that or is that kind of on the down low <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, like often it's it's rare that I even ask for a name unless I really need a name. And so like specifics sure. and stuff, this is why I ask for your help because I've been feeling more and more. Um, I was given a, a new shamanic name a few months ago. Uh, so my first one was Fire Warrior and I've now been also given Riding on Light. So I've been feeling way more galactic. It's like the galactic version of Fire Warrior yeah. is like Riding on Light, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and before many many years ago like over five years ago um mm -hmm. I had had this experience with pink light beings I'm like the reminder of feeling like at home among them and so I always keep rose quartz somewhere around me um right. and I feel very like 
close to that, like motherly unconditional love as part of like my life story. And it feels like they get that <laughs> and that I'm yeah. here sometimes feeling alone in carrying that energy or that light. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, when I feel that I'll, I'll go and visit them basically to like recharge in this rosy pink light. That's what like yeah. the pink light beings feel like. I love for me. that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then the star folk are part of my shamanic um, spirit circle that does healing work. When I go and do um, group healing circles, uh, okay. they're one of the beings that gets called in. So it's like a collective of all these different types of light and stars. Um, and then they show up almost as like one kind of white light being. Yeah. Yeah. But almost like, you know, like the like the Pink Floyd, uh, you know, the, yeah, the rainbow. Yeah. yeah it's like that. <laughs> That's how they are. <laughs> oh, so cool. <laughs> yeah. And so all, all that they've told me really is, um, I have a very like sense of like familiarity with them, but their like meaning is about bringing people to their home, uh, among the stars. And so that's their, like, they represent like cosmic belonging in a sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, when you were explaining that, I, immediately was thinking here with your alignment mm. to uh I'm, I'm not sure if it's correctly pronounced as sheet mm. here but um this is in your fourth house and that that is what I was feeling with this connection mercury's here so I'm I was getting intuitively that telepathy coming through here and venus is also here so that unconditional love coming in this is your I feel your star family is mm. either maybe it is um the star folk or I don't know I'm kind of feeling maybe the the pink light beams that's kind of coming through more strongly with that mm -hmm. so uh yeah that that's definitely giving bells are ringing there with that for sure so Beautiful. and it I, makes sense because that's Venus yeah mm -hmm. so it yeah, makes Venus sense because that's the same kind of energy as like yeah Venus exactly. or like Pisces Mercury like the softy yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that intuitiveness very deeply um, in tune and empathetic. And then you have that passionate Venus and Aries here mm -hmm. um, yeah. bringing in that, when you said unconditional love, that card actually does come up um, <laughs> when you're reading. I don't remember if it was that alignment or I think it was actually Alpha Centauri, but still it's, it's coming through <laughs> very strongly. And yeah. just that sense of family very much. This is like your your spirit family, whatever you want to call it, definitely. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have a strong sense that that's perhaps where they are aligned from, from that realm there. So Beautiful. we will explore more of that. So that's exciting to hear that from you yeah. and see that connection. So let's start though. So let's backtrack a little bit. I'm going to start you off with what I'm perceiving as your most very distant, distant soul origins here. So we're going Alpha Centauri here, or I'm sorry, Beta Centauri, or it's also called Hadar. So where have you been? So here is your this little constellation map here for you. Beta Centauri or Hadar. So what is Hadar here? So Hadar, from what I actually research, is a very rare starseed placement to have. So welcome to Earth here. <laughs> <laughs> but this being in your 12th house also is really bringing in that confirmation pluto and the 12th house this is ancestral work this is that deep spiritual connection this is past lives so it's like bam 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 right there <laughs> and in scorpio oof, you are going deep <laughs> i do actually too um just a little tangent have you ever experienced some sort of what I would call a dark night of the soul experience through your life or you yeah like at least a few yeah <laughs> yeah or multiple yeah, yeah. Of course, these, these things always happen in multiples right <laughs> yeah but I, I feel like that really even though what you know whatever that circumstance or that situation was it really transformed you into being who you are today I mean this will go more into your serious placement with the eighth house and the moon and Chiron I was like ooh, wounds there but you're mm -hmm. going deep that's with your cancer but then mm -hmm. I also see that correlation here with Scorpio and Pluto mm -hmm. so it's brought you to 
you know, where you're at now in life. So I was just curious about that. So little tangent there. Many of us intuitives, um, I think, <laughs> can really go through it sometimes. Definitely. But but here we are. So um, also with this placement, I was getting something here with the number three. And I don't know if three is something very significant in your life or things happening in threes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. hilariously so like when I had psychic dreams when I was a kid it would be like well and actually even now often it would be like three days or three weeks or three months later wow. there will be like the confirmation which is funny um but I was just saying today how the last few boyfriends that I've had have all had three kids and I'm like trying not to date people with kids and yet I still end up in these like dynamics where there's like wow three yeah. um and and that like the mother essence being challenged or like like that it's like that Scorpio stuff where it's like this is yeah. taboo this is tough this is dark but yet there's like a something juicy and there's mm -hmm. something sensual about the way that I'm healing through whatever yes. that is yeah yes yeah wow. okay yeah. <laughs> so even with I think you are gonna find throughout your life um the significance with three coming into I was getting that triple goddess Okay, the feminine energies. Uh, are you familiar with, yeah, mm -hmm. maiden, mother, crone? So it's like these. It's like almost your life is kind of segmented in these threes, and I think you're gonna really see yourself play out. And I could just, I was envisioning you as this wise old elder, <laughs> you know, in the future. So, but I do get that very yeah motherly energy from you as your um, connections that you've had uh, pick up on too. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if you, you know, don't become a, a mother, you know, having children, I feel that you are in a way to who you connect with. So that's really yeah. beautiful to see. Yes, those, the threes playing out like that. And um, obviously, if it's something that you want to break away from, at least you can um, catch it out. <laughs> if yeah. you don't want to. Yeah. Yeah, have the, it's like the there's something there. Story. But yeah, it's it's very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And I am um I've had visions just because it might come up as relevant as well. Yeah. Um I've had visions of um supporting and like running an orphanage in Madagascar. Um so this yeah. like very maternal like yes. supportive um energy and That's really uh, beautiful. Yeah, it is. And it's funny, the the man that I'm seeing now, it's temporary because I'm leaving, like I'm leaving Scotland. So um, oh. he has three kids, but I haven't met them because he doesn't have access to them at the moment. And um, it's very sad, very heartbreaking mm. for me. So it, like, there's always something like the last time it was three kids, it was like the, the mother was actually really hurting them. And then the one before oh. that, it was like, she was just really non-empathetic. And so I've just been That's around funny. like all these, like, like it really puts me up against the I'm not able to give purely in that way. And so, yeah, exactly. So it, I know the path is about like encouraging me to be able to express yeah. this aspect of myself. So yeah, this is very appreciated. That's wow. That's really amazing. Um, it's like that's happening to where you're, you're put there almost to bring some sort of healing to that situation in some way. Yeah. So I, I do hope though that, it can work out you yeah. know, when it's yeah. the right the for right me. Person, you know? yeah. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> yeah, it, definitely. I'm sure that's, yeah, as a sense, someone so sensitive to and wants to give, you know, and wants to nurture, I'm, I can only imagine that can be, yeah, very, very difficult. So, very Scorpio. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. To, um, I think, have with that Scorpio energy too, finding, you know, where can you, you can push and push boundaries, but where can you place boundaries too? So for yourself, Absolutely. you're very yeah. interesting. The three. You're very intuitive. Yeah. 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 That's coming through. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely glad I mentioned that because like I said, it was really falling through there. Uh, Hadar, what are some Hadarian traits? Compassionate, of course. So seeing the unity and oneness of all things, that's really big. So you see that big picture and no matter how individual we are, you are able to see through all that and see the oneness and all living things like that tree that you saw when you were a kid, you know, yeah. all over or get knocked over. Yeah. Um, 
do you have a very artistic and creative side by the way yeah i'm actually um like producing an, a music album based off the poetry of one of my ancestors <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. So very on track. <laughs> yeah. So I've made them into songs. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And he's of the Scottish lineage. Okay. So you're right there in your roots in Scotland. Yes. With your uh, ancestors. My great grandfather actually was like a church minister 15 minutes away from here for like 40 years. Wow. Yeah. Super close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm getting really in touch with your roots. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I didn't really grow up with them. So it's very interesting. Yeah, you have uh, your sun sign and Aries is in the fifth house. So I was wondering too, with that placement, just alone there, you know, without even that uh, Hadarian trait, I was, I could see very much a very ambitious and creative type of person. Yes. <laughs> So very cool to see. I'm sure you put in a lot of creativity in your own um, work that you do. And also with your music, that's that sounds so amazing uh, with the poetry that's mm -hmm. turning into music. So cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, it's been like a, a and also a big healing journey because it's all the masculine side. Mm -hmm. And yeah, okay. and he was like a military genius, but like also wrote poetry and he was executed. Oh. So yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so, like you said, with healing too, you are very much a natural healer <laughs> and you definitely bring those abilities in with your work. So this is just a little side note. Um, I, I can let you read this in your own time, but I just put in another thick star that I saw aligned here. So it's just something about some maybe health issues to look out for. So that's why I felt called to just add that in as like a little bonus alignment. <laughs> I so literally had a vision of a snake coming in through the back of my intestines and clearing me out like earlier this week. Like this is like, oh, wow. Okay. So I read this. And I was like, wow. Okay. Yes. So something going on there. Uh, That's have amazing. You had, have you had any chronic issues or colon issues before? I've been getting like, not that I know of, but I've been getting the feeling like not my, would, let's say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but I've been getting the calling to fast and that like my absorption of nutrients is not as strong as it okay. ought to be. And so I keep feeling like there's deeper, like healing of the intestinal, like that there actually yeah. just needs to be full cleansing happening. Yeah. So yeah, I've been totally sort of feeling cleansing. this. Yeah, okay. absolutely. There you go. Yeah, some sort of, yeah, cleansing. Definitely go with that then. That, that's your yeah. sign. <laughs> that's amazing. <Okay. laughs> Here are these uh, past life cards that I drew uh, with this alignment to Hadar. So love life is the first card that I got. And what I'm, what I was getting through with that, and it very much rang true with what you were saying earlier about unconditional love. I feel this realm in, a, in and of itself was one just totally above our our three D, you know, comprehension that we feel here. This was total unconditional love in this in this dimension, this place, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and it was just such a high vibration. So I'm sure that you can probably maybe you've even had dreams where uh, or just found it difficult with being here in a more lower vibration where unconditional love and just love itself can be very, very challenging here. And we have a lot of that polarity that we're trying to integrate and deal with here, right? So, but you channel this, this pure unconditional love through your healing work with your mm -hmm. placement aligned here. So it's very beautiful uh, to see uh, that coming through so strongly for you. And there is a connection to Asia. I don't know if you've ever had any sort of calling to Asian teachings or even the culture itself, um, mm -hmm. perhaps with Hinduism or Buddhism. What I was getting through with this is, so as you see in your next card, it's monk or nun. I get the sense that you were this type of spiritual person there or spiritual being um, where you were uh practicing these teachings that were very much aligned and similar to the Asian cultures of, um, or the teachings like Hinduism and Buddhism. So how does that resonate for you? Have you ever? Yeah, 
interestingly, one of the guides that I use in my shamanic healing work is like this golden Buddha. <laughs> so I'm okay. like, okay, like he shows up for okay. sure. Okay. Um, and, uh, and also I have this like flickering image coming into my mind that mm. is like, um, a, a time where I, and it's a memory that's like kind of come up, but I can't tell whether it's like of this life or like a past feeling. Like I really have never been able to kind of define sure. it. Okay. And it feels like, um, like, uh, like a crying and releasing of all of the, like the recognition of ways that I've been like hurt or disconnected in sensual or romantic ways and, okay. and the idea that almost everything has cracked open and it feels like of you know that temple that's like up on kind of like a mountainy type mm -hmm. of yeah that um it's like maybe tibet or something I yeah yeah you know what i'm talking like, about this yeah where they feel like up, up there yeah <laughs> yeah it feels like in that kind of space and that it's like i've been alone for a while and then finally i let go of the attachment of finding like love in that in that way and that my heart just okay. like but I can't tell whether it was like a later on of this life or of yeah. like a not a past experience yeah okay yeah. yeah it it does sound like something that you perhaps did experience so you might have ended up having um a life a lifetime too um on earth where you were going through that mm -hmm. um, but I know this sounds very confusing but <laughs> you've probably heard this before but to me time is also non-linear so who knows yeah. when it's actually happening no maybe it's happening know. right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like all over the place so it could be even yeah future yeah you can think of it that way too so yeah uh, but I think you just the fact that you remember that uh probably is something significant for you to learn learn something from to take mm -hmm. away from Mm -hmm. yeah I haven't thought about it for a while it's a good one it's yeah. interesting you mentioned too like a golden buddha too in that card being mm -hmm. that kind of golden uh color there you very much are tapping into your old wisdom from this lifetime and trees was on the bottom of the deck so the bottom of the deck is kind of I think of it as like the overall energy or it kind of sets the scene uh, of that lifetime and for me what I'm getting through with that is it's more so your, this is your ancestral connection, your deep roots to this lifetime, mm -hmm. to Hadar. So I'm excited to share this with you, Lyra. Uh, have you heard about Lyra or any anything at all about Lyra? I, I was, was looking, about Lyra. <laughs> yeah, I was looking it up recently. And then it was funny because mm -hmm. I, I have had a lot of like Persephone things. So even just like skimming quickly and being like, oh, that's hilarious. So that's going to show up here. But the lyre and music, obviously, as well. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, really cool. I, yeah, I'm glad that I include that um, mythology. It does, yeah, have Hades yeah. and Persephone in there. Of uh, What yeah. kind of things, just out of curiosity, with Persephone was coming up? Or just your interest generally? Yeah, Persephone okay. has come up for a few clients recently, but also mm. um, like claiming power, or like resurrection type feeling yeah. um, mm -hmm. with within my art. Like that it feels like connected yeah, to okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. That's interesting that you say that because um, I just actually recorded a podcast not too long ago um, that I do on my YouTube. And we brought up, we're talking about the light and dark feminine that's coming up this month with the astrology. The, mm -hmm. I think around, what was it? The 19th of August, around the full moon, basically. Mm -hmm. So, and Persephone was one of the goddesses that we gave an example of and we're seeing so that's really cool it's kind of validating to see that you are feeling that as well so yeah uh lyra lyra i do include the little mythology about what this is so it's based on the lyre the um, musical instrument that um, apollo had requested to place into the heavens so we have the beautiful lyra constellation and you do enjoy music too, so there you go. It is of the nature of Venus and Mercury. Again, kind of going into that that love energy, and then with your uh, tele telepathic abilities and your intuitive abilities coming through very strongly. I could see, you know, with that in Lyra, you have also I feel a very natural and unique beauty, alluring, alluring aura to you, especially in relationships with this alignment placed in your second house. 
So you may find yourself more drawn to more non-conventional relationships or you can be attracted to someone maybe a bit more opposite of you. Yes. <laughs> I always date like fighter types and like, like okay. people with anger. And I'm like, oh, I just so don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they have it for you. Exactly. They protect me. Yeah. There you go. Uh, you do follow your dreams. You develop your own ideals and perspectives into practical ways since your uh, life path is also, if I scroll all the way back up to your chart, uh, your life path here is shared in the same house as that. So here's your connections here with uh, Lyra. Mm. So yeah, you have that aligning to um, Shiliac and the M57 ring nebula, which is supposedly said through some channelings to be possibly a portal, which was mm. used to travel inter interdimensionally. Mm. So you know, take, take that how you will. <laughs> mm. uh, now going into the nitty gritty now with Lyra, there is some very heavy, heavy channeled history that has come through. Um, I share this with you because I wholeheartedly feel it resonates. Um, basically, Lyra was uh, at one point, I would think of it as paradise, Garden of Eden. Uh, and of course, uh, some other beings came in, some other entities came in supposedly reptilian race from Draco. There was this big all out war um, to where the Lyrans unfortunately were totally completely outnumbered. Uh, many suffered this trauma and a lot of, I mean, a lot of us that are connected to Lyra, I, I myself included, feel that soul trauma from that and having to leave. And that comes with abandonment issues that comes with uh, the traumas of war, having to relocate trying to find where is your home, have that sense of home in this world. I mean, I mean, you're being, you're kind of nomadic. So maybe you're exploring that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that expression, home is where the heart is, you know, <laughs> and making a home for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do share that because I, I do intuitively feel that did happen in some sort of way. Um, when we think of even in very ancient texts had explained this great battle in the heavens that was described. Um, so it does, you know, really resonate for me. If that's, if this is new to you, um, definitely, you know, let that sink in because I know it can be a lot to um, take that in. And so now what's happening here on earth, right? We're seeing the same, same kind of things playing out here maybe in not such a massive way, but there's definitely been times in history where we've had wars, of course, where it has been very similar to that. So I feel we're trying to uh, remember and uh, remedy those kind of traumas that we were facing from that situation and that, that experience that had happened. Because I've been drifting around some things about this anyway and chatting about it with some yeah. of my um, shamanic friends, which led me yeah. to the galactic astrology anyway, actually. So it's okay, good because it's, cool. it's been around my awareness, but okay. it resonates with me as like a child. I I was always like, but war does not make any sense. Why are we doing it? Like, why? <laughs> and that feeling of like, yeah, it's trauma, but it's also like, but there's like a remembrance of like, oh, it could just be not that way. It could just be different. And, yeah, and so yeah. the familiarity with that, whereas other people seem to like not believe that or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, take time. I put to reflect intuitively if you were, you feel you were there before, during, or after this major event. What I was kind of getting when I went and pulled your cards is it was very much like the start of it mm -hmm. because of the alignment to it too. Um, it's in your outer planets. So I was getting the sense that you got to thankfully <laughs> enjoy uh, most of it before, you know, shit hit the fan, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So, and it does come through with your cards that you got. So Scriber Writer, came through so you had some sort of experience here maybe it could have been like physical writing in some sort of way but I also get like some sort of communication that you did 
Uh, this could have been some sort of psychic or spiritual significance that you made practical through your Capricorn placement through here, um, where you're communicating in some way. So that was kind of like your main um, identity, so to speak, there. But you have this karmic relationship that is uh, significant here. So the karmic relationship not necessarily means that it's a bad thing, right? So I feel like there's some sort of karma that needed to be cleared because they basically, it's funny too, you mentioned with the um, your attraction to certain uh, men, you said being more like those fighter, angry. So you, I feel that knighthood card. Mm -hmm. You were you were with some sort of warrior, very yeah, masculine, and they it didn't work out with your relationship because they literally had to go fight this war. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that, <laughs> yeah, and that's your logic coming in when you were a little girl from the time you were a little girl going, we don't need to do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm and I'm sure you probably said that to him. <laughs> and literally like all of my original songs my own personal songs it's like this saga of a knight leaving wow. and like this the like exactly what you're describing this feeling of like but but you and then by the time he comes finally back and is able to be king he loses his memory and so it's like oh. finally you're back and you don't even know oh. who I am and so like okay. this whole yeah yeah it's really fascinating and very oh. sad <laughs> but it's always oh. a story this love saga that comes out and very oh. of divine masculine and yes. feminine. I have someone in my past who um, is writing like a past life story and he would be very night energy. I would describe mm. it as very karmic in that there was lots mm. of uprooting and teaching within yes. that. Mm. Um, yeah. And I've never, I've never read this book, but he said he wanted me to edit it. And uh, we haven't spoken for a few years, but it's one of these yeah. unfinished businesses uh yeah. fascinating <laughs> so I was like <laughs> uh, yeah accurate so there it is you know reflecting yeah in in your life now so absolutely when you said too about them forgetting their memory uh -huh. it that kind of reminds me of it's like when you uh you know when you die you and then you get reincarnated, then you forget your memory. You forget who I am. You yeah. forget where you are. So it's like, yeah. then you meet in a new life and yeah. he's forgotten who you are. And you're like, oh. it's me. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> like, I am here. <laughs> yeah. So Aww. that, and mm -hmm. I don't have any like attachment if we end up together, but it's very bizarre. Very bizarre. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good that you've released that, the attachment to it. And oh Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. No. <laughs> I don't wait around. <laughs> good. Good. Yeah, but it's odd. Like he actually, he still to this day posts like images of night, like a night and like a, yeah, it's fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, he was coming through to, in this, uh, <laughs> in this placement. Wow. This is why I, this is why I really love to do, um, these readings live like this because it's, you know, making these connections to what I just found and and so in depth, you. yeah, it's so beautiful, yeah, and it's it's validation both ways. I hope, like honestly, that's what's so yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Did did he ever too feel a sense of like, oh, I, I know you, I knew you from a past life, like a yeah, like the, the first time we ever met, I was like, this guy is like so not my type. Weirdly, he held my face and he was like in another life and I was like okay and then he left and I was like that was the weirdest thing oh. <laughs> like, I was like whatever um and I think the reason he asked me to read the past life like story of his or to edit it one day is because he has this yeah like it always feels like we're walking by this like I'll see you later like I know who you are but he doesn't want to admit it and then I don't want to be with someone who doesn't get it and I don't like yes. I don't want to walk through the annoying stage of fighting against ego yeah. You know? And so, yeah. yeah, it's like if we circle back or don't, but like, yeah, mm -hmm. there's definitely a strange feeling of like okay. his awareness. Yeah. It, it does sound uh, kind of, I would say a good thing that you met him, you know, already. It's it's almost like you kind of got that, got it out of the way. <laughs> type yeah. of thing. Not, not to make it sound bad, but no, for sure. Now you can, you know, learn from that. And maybe if you, you know, of course, if you want to then focus and shift that um, of different type of relationship that you might want mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, exactly. Maybe no more nights. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's so funny. It's bizarrely intensely spiritual something. Yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah very much spiritual mm -hmm. um, significance and lessons. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Now we're going to go on to um, what I'm kind of feeling is this uh, this telepathic <laughs> telepathic connection here you have with uh, the Pegasus constellation. We have the star uh, sheet. and. I might be butchering the pronunciation of that. Um, but this does show, um, this has to do, again, spirit family coming through strongly because it was in your fourth house, mm -hmm. um, star family, spirit family. I feel that perhaps this is who you are uh, maybe communicating with telepathically, that you feel this sense of like family with and deep connection to, you know, they're the ones that you had connected with in this incarnation here. So uh, it's also called uh, Beta Pegasi. So whichever you prefer. <laughs> do you like octopuses, by the way, or sea creatures? I don't <laughs> anything to do with sea creatures. I really, anymore. yeah, like I love swimming um, and okay. I love, like I used to always like play mermaid in the pool. Um, yeah. And like, I love singing and that feels very like mermaid siren. Yeah, siren, yes. yeah. Yeah, very siren-y. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, when I was actually looking for an image, when I was, uh, when I made this originally, I was getting more siren type <laughs> vibe. Uh, yeah. But definitely. Yeah. Love of being near water, swimming. Uh, you are near water, even where you live now too. And funny enough too, when you were back in Canada, you told me you were by the lakes too I, yeah I always <laughs> find like when I need perspective I go to be like I need to be around water and I almost yeah. like it itches at me until I am around a big body of water and then I like chill yes. out mm -hmm. and I often refer to um like in spirit work I often refer to like our deep waters or like the mm -hmm. ocean depths like I always sort of talk about like our subconscious and our you know like our emotional states as all like water references <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. That, it's a yeah. good way too to look at it even more metaphorically speaking totally totally yeah. this it does show your um intelligence too and love of learning with this placement uh a scientific maybe scientific minded but with the spirituality to balance that yes um and of course that creative spirit coming in once again too mm -hmm. Uh, and I do feel that, yeah, you probably have found Earth very difficult, especially in terms of mobility and communication. Uh, you naturally are, you know, just doing this telepathy with these other beings. And I'm sure you feel like, why can't we, why can't we humans do that? That's my thought wave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like maybe with, um, you know, some sort of blocker on it, like when you can choose to... <laughs> communicate telepathically um or even just the mobility aspect of it being able to swim fast or you, you might just feel like this this body that we are in is um very slow <laughs> compared to what you could uh your soul used to be able to do that might be why too you love to swim um because it kind of reminds you of that and it kind of just resets you and uh cleanses you even this does bring you uh, an adventurous spirit and intelligence. Uh, again, yeah, I said you love swimming, being near water. You might be called to, of course, live near a source of water. You might even end up finding uh, a home one day, maybe a forever home. Or maybe if you just choose to move nomadically still, um, but always near water is mm -hmm. definitely important for you. So yeah, water will call to you and uh, will help you cleanse your energy, whether being near it or even even simply taking a soothing bath with Epsom salts. Your inner mermaid will thank you. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> there are no bathtubs here. And I promised myself oh. that the next, I'm like, it's a whole retreat center. How are there no bathtubs? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you would yeah, think. wild. A retreat center. Yeah, for oh. sure. I know it's a problem. And so I said the next place that I live in, if I'm choosing a home, has to have a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm the same too. <laughs> yeah. Necessary. <laughs> yeah. It's an essential. <laughs> uh, so I did just include a little link to this article. I found very interesting when I first had looked up uh, Beta Pegasi. So mm. feel free to dive in. No, well, pun intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
sorry, it's a bad joke, but I like it. <laughs> feel free, yeah, to explore that more. Um, a lot of good information. Well, one of the things too was this really beautiful uh, channeled artwork by Nicole Chi, and uh, yeah, I think that's really cool to see. You know, I think a lot of the times when we're exploring these galactic connections, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing, we we see a lot of the more humanoid type. So I think it was kind of cool to see maybe a not so human looking <laughs> type of creature. So cool mm -hmm. artwork that I just thought would uh, be very fitting to include here. Love that. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience like? So here are the cards that I pulled. Now, if you have experience, I'm gonna start with the bottom of the deck first, the orphan card. If you have experienced some abandonment issues or even a little, little bit of that in your um, childhood or had those feelings of, not even from your family, but perhaps in relationships even. Um, but it sounds like you're probably pretty secure though with relationships um, at, as of now in your point of life to having those boundaries and things. Uh, but that orphan card comes through here of you having some issues there with not having um, a family in this lifetime when you were uh, very young. Um, but there is something here with a father placement and I'm actually I was getting with the the male female card it was actually that you experienced um the reversal so of that masculine energy here where you were actually a father here um coming through very strongly and that you had a baby in this life so it so family became very important to you in this life because of what you had experienced as um a young child here um in this Type of realm here so yeah family very much became important here again this could be um who you are uh, telepathically communicating with or you know spiritually connecting with as uh, your past family I feel this very this sense of kinship and very sweet loving yeah family so i feel like you turned a really um grim situation into a very beautiful one and i think you probably have a natural uh, knack for that in this life to being able to transmute the darkness into something good. So yes, it's strange. Like that. my parents, um, both of them, like basically left their families and just built like our core unit themselves. Okay. So yeah. my father's actually quite special to me, but mm -hmm. I didn't get to know any of my like aunts and uncles and grandparents. And the only time I would meet an aunt or uncle is if it was like some tough situation okay. um, or mm -hmm. there was like, like, oh, they're going to die in like a year. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. Oh. Nice to meet you. See you later. Yeah. I suppose, you know, you're just yeah. like, yeah. And my, um, my grandma sued my father, uh, like when I was an adult. And so that was the Scottish side. So I came back here for like my family, my father's side healing. So yeah. I felt abandoned and that it feels like no one in this lifetime mm. cares about being my family other than my parents. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So um, it, it's interesting to me because I'm kind of going, yeah, it does feel like it's the father's ancestry that I felt more yeah. of uh, like, that's why I came to Scotland was for this, you know, back ancestral healing work. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That, that's very interesting that that's there. Um, with the and I found it funny because it was like, it was all the men that I'm interested in learning more about. And I'm like, but I'm the female. So I that opposite gender expression thing made a lot of sense okay. to me that it would come out because I always thought, oh, no, that's kind of odd that yeah. I'm like so passionate about just the like the grandfathers and the great grandfathers. And yeah, you know, the masculine yeah. side there. Yeah, yeah. the father yeah. of the lineage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Great. it makes it makes sense. We'll go to your most recent. Uh, this is before you decided to incarnate onto our lovely Earth. <laughs> so we have the dog star, Sirius A. Okay, so this is the brightest star in the sky. The ancient Greeks called this this star the scorching one because of its brilliance and its semblance to the dog days of summer. And funny enough, it was um, last two weeks, or actually it might be the first two weeks of July where this was um, happening. So mm. we had that in July, our you know dog days of summer, even though we didn't get much of a summer here in the UK, mm. but <laughs> <laughs> we had that like one week where yeah. <laughs> it was pretty hot. 
this is aligned to your cancer moon in the deep transformative you're always going deep transformative eighth house this gives a, a beautiful omen for uh, success in your spiritual abilities so congratulations this is very Ooh. good news for you and your heightened <laughs> intuition it, it is very yeah very good because eighth house also deals with money and finances so um the fact that sirius is lining up there um with your cancer moon mm -hmm. your heightened uh intuition and your feeling ability feelings <laughs> yes all your feelings yeah <laughs> it, it is actually a very yeah very good omen there to mm. see this uh, fixed star there mm. the ancient astrologers also saw this alignment to the nada's moon as one that denotes uh success in business you might even gain some level of fame or influence in your spiritual work uh, mm. have you found that starting yet or have you started to gain some Yes, I've Good. just been Good. in this phase of realizing actually um, that that's more of what I've already been doing. I'm sort of seeing, like I, I opened up a scholarship for this empath energetics program and I was yeah. like, maybe I'll get 30 applications and there's like over 150 already. And I was like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, hmm, <laughs> maybe there's a lot more people waiting and um, mm -hmm. I keep seeing a uh, this event that I want to run online, having thousands of people in it. And the one in Toronto, having thousands of people coming through, it's called Oracle Fest. So it's just very like of this yeah. energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the, you know, I wasn't maybe seeking fame, but the influence piece feels like, mm. yeah, why not? Yeah. Like, why, like, why would I not take that if that's what it's looking, if that's yeah. what I'm being asked to do? Yeah, so like it's really, really encouraging because you know you can still question mm -hmm. it a little bit um, as you go. So of course, yeah. So I hope that yeah helps validate you with what you're doing because people, yeah. I'm just feeling they naturally are just gravitating towards you. So the yeah. more you know you put out there in the work that you do, they're just naturally gonna be drawn into that. Um, you yeah, so good news, really good stuff to I love see. It. I had this vision the other day. Um, when I was on like the planet or star that I would say represents my business. Um, mm -hmm. And I had this like, like conch, like conch shell. And I was like, Boo -hoo, like it could call it. And all these people were like coming in. <laughs> so it was really sweet. And I was like, oh, they're all wanting to come forward. How weird. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's always surprising. I love your, your dreams and your visions. I love them. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> they're, they're very, uh, yeah, very me uh, metaphorical and metaphysical. Yeah. Yeah. And that's funny too is a conch shell with um the uh your alignment to uh, beta pagasi being very aquatic. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like me and like my like oracle kind of yeah. zone and yeah, had this conch shell. Oh, so cool. Basically bringing into um this ancient wisdom that you had learned from from this life, but also your all the other previous lives and putting it into this modern age that we're in so and you're making it work you're doing it <laughs> I'm literally like writing this business course right now called ancient ways for modern days <laughs> wow okay like the way you said that was perfect oh wow this is so cool I'm loving how it's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all clicking into place <laughs> yeah beautiful cool. well there's more yeah more validation there for you uh your traits again highly intuitive you, you check off all the intuitive boxes <laughs> with your alignments you really do uh various spiritual talents as well so you might dive in dabble in different spiritual things mm -hmm. uh, again that naturally creative expression coming in and connection possibly to or past lives in ancient egypt or uh the connection to egyptian deities mm -hmm. have you ever felt that at all um i felt like a curiosity i like years back i had this book about like egyptian power poses and i was really loving them oh. Okay. Um, but I definitely haven't found like a specific deity that's like called to me, or I haven't okay. found a specific past life yet that mm -hmm. is um, of ancient Egypt. Um, sure. But it does feel like something circles around there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Sometimes um, I find that it's sometimes with people with Sirius, because this is, um, yeah, Sirius A, but then there's um, also Sirius B. So I was trying to see if maybe if there was a connection there, if it would come out um, in the cards. So it didn't. So maybe it doesn't just come through as strongly for you. And that's okay. Yeah. It was, you know, it's not 
bad either way. I think there was more of this focus here with your wisdom and knowledge that you were gaining here. So you had a very deep uh, commitment. You see the card vows coming through here to your spiritual wisdom and practices. I feel you were someone others could seek out for knowledge, especially uh, spiritually, and they still do. <laughs> so it likely uh, was a struggle at first. And this is kind of when I mentioned earlier about that dark night of the soul um, because of your eighth house placement that was kind of going on here with it aligning in with your moon sign. So, um, but it was necessary for you to reach your highly intuitive state, which again, you're seeing played out here in your current life. So I also feel you remembered your Lyran lifetime while you were here because it is making an aspect called an opposition. So it's going literally straight across um, to Lyra. So you might've done some sort of past life work like how you're doing right now and <laughs> presently and remembering your Lyran connection. You didn't want all those things to get lost in, in the war and the um, destruction. So you were able to try to bring those teachings back in, in this connection here to the Syrian realm. Uh, also, you had a connection here to nature and animals. So the card of farm came up and I, for me, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, I don't think of like a farm, like how we do here, you know, rolling green hills and some you know horses and <laughs> stuff, who, like who knows what that scene looked like, but that is um, kind of painting the picture of this kind of environment that you were living in very much um, immersed with animals and nature here. Um, Perhaps you, you know, lived off the land, that type of thing. So you also, too, you had a bonus card that came out. <laughs> so an extra oh, a one bonus. <laughs> yeah, you get a little bonus. <laughs> uh, and so it's really cool. You had father before, right? So now we're looking at mother here. We have, we have the masculine and now we have the feminine coming in. And the fact that it is in your moon sign, the moon, the mother. Okay, so I feel that this is either the fact that you experienced being a mother here um or it's actually i'd say i would say a bit of both i think is that you were a mother here but uh also that it ties into your your own mother's ancestral lineage in some way mm -hmm. so maybe she has some syrian uh placements in her chart for example mm -hmm. um but yeah i do feel that you had children here and you experienced uh this kind of motherly nurturing connection and you know especially with uh your moon and cancer that definitely comes through um and even funny enough too with you know you said some of your people that you connect with calling you their mother too i know that probably brings you back to that and it's you know you naturally have that nurturing very loving energy too so I can just feel that too from speaking with you <laughs> this Thank past you. hour. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bottom of the deck too, again, trees. So I was thinking family tree. So mother connecting here, your soul being deeply rooted here, along with the connection to the natural world. Mm. That all makes sense. And the it's funny that last one you were describing, it feels way more of like I wasn't getting a direct like here past life it felt felt way more of the mm. like like the Syrian life yeah. like and uh but like Snow White vibe <laughs> like that <laughs> but like Snow White oh. the mother yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah with like the all the animals or <laughs> yeah exactly exactly birds, yeah. Birds, yeah it's very sweet <laughs> yeah I could see that. I could see Snow White energy from you. <laughs> it's one kind of life, you know. If I could give yeah. up all my business, I would. I would just go quit and have some goats. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love goats. They're so yeah. <laughs> they're so where are you going now? Well, you are going in the right direction. That's for sure. Everything you've told me, you are truly following your life path here. So that's the good news. Mm -hmm. Um, you have so your North Node in Capricorn is is making um, a sextile it's called so it's kind of this harmonious energy happening with the virgo constellation to a star called surma hmm. so this aspect what does this mean brings a very favorable and harmonious energy to your endeavors so yeah everything really 
looks good <laughs> with that. So your North Node looks very good. You are truly, you know, utilizing all your soul has learned throughout your lives. It's to become the spiritual teacher that you are meant to become here. And you're doing it. You are putting it into motion. You're making it happen. So you are able to access that ancient wisdom through your higher self and create these very meaningful connections. Uh, this also shows too that karma will favor you very well, a sermon here. So yay, good yeah. news, success, yeah. Time for the payoff, I'm here yes. for it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, when we're talking about the three, now you get threefold. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm here go. for it. I'll Absolutely. put that out there for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> put that out. So with your uh, rising sign, also called your ascendant in Scorpio, um, by the way, you might feel more Scorpio than you do Aries. Have you ever felt like you you would feel a little bit more Scorpio than you are in Aries sometimes? Yeah, my um, I used to do burlesque, uh, and I have like a lot of burlesque? yeah, and like definitely like the transformation, the kind of like mm -hmm. like moody. Like sometimes yeah. I feel like I, I really prefer the coolness of mm -hmm. Scorpio. <laughs> yeah. um, but underneath it, I'm I'm pretty much like honest and open and ambitious yeah. like you know theories but yeah. i really do i really do vibe with the scorpio for sure yeah. so the only thing that i would say you know watch out for here so that you know i gotta tell you mm -hmm. anything to look out for yeah i'll tell you the bad news first and then the good news so right. <laughs> you have this opposition to perseus and algal algal's mm, kind of an icky energy to be honest i <laughs> Uh, it's basically what this is doing here. It's warning you to watch out for energy vampires. I don't know if you've experienced some people that oh, yeah. have come in and they just totally drain you. Yep, totally drain you. Suck you dry here from your, because they love your energy. They want to feed off of it. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, those these people might come in to not even be consciously aware they're doing it. Um, yeah. Some of them may be though, on the other hand yeah um but that's something just to be careful of to not get drained um from these other people's energy uh especially being a highly sensitive person i totally understand that too think about different ways you can protect yourself uh sometimes it's called the evil eye or any sort of bad energy just make sure you keep up with those um type of spiritual practices or protections that you can uh do you do anything like that that or have you found anything that helps you against yeah. it's funny i i was wearing an an evil eye um ring but i kept losing it and i was annoyed because oh. i wore it because i see the next line there i was getting so many migraines and i was like i literally felt oh. like it was thought arrows from people like yes. like and i was like how do i stop this and it was so frustrating oh. so like intrusive thoughts like thought arrows headaches yeah. migraines it was wild it's like since i've moved here i've become way more sensitive i think just being back at like ancestral mm -hmm. homeland and yeah, the land, more yeah. shamanic work you know it's i've become more aware of it mm -hmm. um and in empath energetics i we go through shadow and light work and legacy work and in my light work i was working on amplifying the light of vampire within me which is so fascinating mm -hmm. and the light That's of vampire cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the go. light of vampire was like, um, like understanding what drains and like what takes away from my energy and yeah. like staying in my castle or like using my cloak, like as needed. Yeah. Um, and so I, I have that. been feeling really decisive on like, this takes too much energy. It's gone and not even yeah. giving it a second thought. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I know my sensitivity when I was maybe younger or less experienced, I would sure. feel like, yeah. And I would just feel like, like, cause they come in on the wings of love half the time. And so it was like this, like illusion of. Yeah. Illusion. Right? Yeah. 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 And so I definitely, I definitely do more of those types of, um, yeah. Protection. I tend to wear the rose quartz now as my like love protection as well. Like it's, yeah. it's almost, that's what I've replaced it with too. So What's and interesting too with the migraines uh coming in. So have you been has it been better now with the migraine? Yeah, I haven't had one in a really long time. Um, but I had like at least twelve last year. Like it was like mega, I'd never had so many. Um yeah. and 
yeah, I'm very distracting. It feels like you have to shut out the world. And so that it felt very like Dracula. It's like, I have to shut out everything and be like, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. And so it feels nice to be in the empowered version and kind of having this feeling of like being divinely protected and allowing yes. that to be more of my, like what I hold strongly to. Yeah. I like yeah. how you describe it too as your own inner vampire kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's that um the dark feminine kind of coming in to protect you, to protect yeah. yourself. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, it's like it Your felt harsh life. for a while to even like let that be a part of yes. things. And then it was like, wait, this allows me to be more myself and more my soft self. So exactly. it isn't actually innately harsh, you know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 Your light, your light feminine. So yeah. we're not being just totally depleted. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing that has been coming up for me a lot is the idea of like preserving my energy instead of just waiting till I've attacked and then repairing after. Like it's yeah. not like fixing wounds. It's like making sure I'm not getting hurt in battle instead yeah. of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In your um yeah. I call it like your spiritual armor on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the good news here, you have um a conjunction to Alpha Centauri. So we're revisiting the Centaurus constellation. So if you remember way back, your very first alignment was in Centaurus. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of going back there, but it's to a different star um, mm -hmm. that's close by called Alpha Centauri. Um, so you, what this means is you're now integrating your psychic and telepathic abilities here in this reality. Um, so by doing this, we saw in your connection to Hadar, was the other star in Centaurus, um, you are bringing in that transformative, right? Scorpio, scorpionics, transformative energy, not only going through this sort of metamorphosis uh, in yourself throughout your life, uh, but also helping to transform and awaken others. And that's very much what you are doing in this work that you've been called to do. And this is creating waves of shifts in awakening our collective consciousness. So on a bigger picture here, even though maybe for you, it might feel like a small portion, um, but that little impact is creating actually a bigger in impact, creating these waves, as I describe it, of awakening many, many people um, to our intuitive abilities that are you know dormant what you're doing is being like okay I've done this how can I help other people do this too and mm -hmm. let me give you the tools and resources here on how to do this and uh, tap into this in yourself so yeah um your your rising sign is right next to yeah your alignment to Hadar so I think it's just important for you to remember in this life um, your most deepest soul origin connection. They always say it always starts within, right? And then it, then it can go out here. So to sum that up, you are truly, yeah, following your soul's mission. So uh, honestly, I didn't, I didn't see anything of really concern besides that icky uh, <laughs> opposition there to algal, but and the I snake colon point. thing, you know, that was a good, yes. yeah, good little That's warning great. and so perfect yeah. for what just showed up as great. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, getting that this week. Yeah. So I'm glad I included that too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a uh, really, really beautiful. I, I really enjoyed looking uh, into your connections here. Uh, and I love that you wrote uh, forgotten knowledge. Cause I always say about the work that I do that it's like, like primal remembering, like I'm yes. always reminding or remember helping people remember stuff rather than it being like I'm teaching a new thing yeah yeah, yeah it yeah. is remembrance yeah you're right absolutely I love it 